Hi, it's Sam and I'm back with another video for Lawn Fawn. Today I'm making a card using the Shadow Box card dies, the Little Woodland Library stamp set and dies, and the Little Woodland Library add-on stamps and dies. Of course, I'm starting my card like I start 99% of all my cards by coloring. I'm using Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers, and I always start by spritzing a little bit of water on my craft mat and using my water brush, which is empty, I swirl it around in the water and get it damp and let it sit while I color some of the images. Um, all of the, I'm going to show all the colors, <laughs> but I forget until a little bit, but um, I'm coloring all the pages the same colors. I'm using uh, mustard seed and natural beige. And I'm using the same colors for the worm, the cute little bookworms, uh, except for I'm also adding uh, some dark brown to just to give them a little bit of a of dimension. Uh, next, I'm coloring the green tufts of grass to add a little bit of color. Um, I always start when I color by starting with my darkest color then pulling it out with the medium color and then using the lightest color to pull it all out together. And sometimes I, if it's a big image, I'll leave some white space and use my slightly damp water brush to pull the color out as well. Um, the tufts of grass were too small to do that. <laughs> oh, I'm, here I'm just showing you the mustard seed, the colors I used. Um, I used peacock blue, platinum brown, and warm gray too for the mole as well. Um, and yellow green, may green, and green for the grass that I already colored. Um, next I'm going to use mustard seed and natural beige for the little mouth area of the mole as well. And bright yellow, mustard, and orange for the fox. As you can see, I stamped two images. They didn't come out as crisp and um, vibrant as the other images, so I just stamped them again and I'm not gonna color them. I crossed them out with some pencil so I didn't confuse myself and color, <laughs> color them anyway, which is what I do. Um, I'm using warm gray too to add uh, the white areas of the fox and then the same colors for the skunk, which is uh, peacock blue, warm gray too, and light gray. Um, I'm coloring uh, always the same darkest, medium, light, and that always gives me a little bit of contrast and shading when I need it. Uh, same warm green too for the white areas of the skunk that I used for the fox. Uh, next is fog gray and light gray, and I'm going to be coloring these sweet little bunnies. I love how they're reading bunnies, like reading buddies. I I mean, adorable. So cute. <laughs> I mean, it's just so cute. Um, and I think, is this when I start coloring the books? No, not yet. I'm using mid-brown mustard and natural beige. Same colors I use for the squirrel. Um, I mean, same colors I use for the bookworms for the squirrel. And um, I always color when I'm using my markers in a circular motion. That gets rid of any kind of brush streaks. So that's what I'm doing when I color all my images. Uh, next, just a, a splash of light blue on the glasses. And... Uh, now I'm going to be coloring the books. I am using uh, rainbow colors. Shocking. I know. I should I should have warned you. Uh, Mid-brown, carmine red, and scarlet red for the red book. Orange and bright yellow for the second book. Uh, mustard. I'm so sorry. Mustard, lemon yellow, and yellow for the third book. Uh, the next set of books uses the same as the greens, which is yellow, green, may, green, and green. Uh, I, I do color in the little uh, oval with uh, um, the mint green. Um, and then the next set of books is um, turquoise green, light blue, and mint green. Then I'm using the same sort of colors. I'm using Persian blue, turquoise green, and light blue. And then I'm actually doing two sets of purples for the last two, lilac and violet, which are a little bit cooler blue tones. 
And then um, light violet and purple for the last book. And any other time I'm using these colors on the books, I'm using the exact same color combinations. This last book is the last new color I'm introducing. It's uh, natural beige and pink. And every other color that I'm using, I've already shown you the color combination. So again, the light blue for the glass is the same as the glasses. This yellow book for the fox is the same as the yellows I used for the yellow book. This uh, mint green is the same as the mint color and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So on and so on. I really love how you can color these critters in like neutral colors, like grays, uh, dark grays, browns, and then the add a fun, happy, like pop of color with the book that they're holding. I think that's just so adorable. I am a huge fan of reading. I read all the time and I buddy read with my best friend. We do two books a month together and that's the the most fun thing ever. <laughs> and so when I had to pick uh you know how what am I gonna make a card today? It was like a no-brainer. I have to use these cute little this cute little set. It's like perfect. Um, and it has a little library. I mean, the nerd in me is, it's over, it's over, working overtime here. I love that idea. I'm coloring the little library in the same browns that I colored basically the squirrel in just, I mean, different ratios. I'm using mustard, natural beige, and dark brown. And I'm just starting to add a base coat with the mustard color and then using my very slightly damp water brush to pull out the color then a the dark brown at the top of the real roof mustard to pull it out same at the base dark brown mustard and a little bit of light beige at the bottom I did think it was dark so I used my water brush to lighten it just a little bit um and I'm using some of the grays to add you know, for the frame and the doorknob that I've already used on other images. These last little bits of books with the titles, which FYI, bravo to the titles there, Harry Potter. I mean, cutest thing ever. Harry Potter, Forest Tales. I mean, there's so many adorable sayings. I just couldn't. I didn't end up using any of the books that have the stamped uh, titles on them this time, but I did color them and cut them out. So I, I'll save them when I make another card because they're too cute. <laughs> it's just adorable. And um, the, these are a lot of images, but I knew I was going to need a lot of images because when I make a shadow box card, I make, I decorate all the sides, inside, outside, all around. And I love carrying the scene across the entire card. So I knew I was going to need um, a lot of images. And the last thing I'm doing is just adding pink cheeks to everything. And those are my colored images. And now we can make the whole card and then we're done. It's so easy. <laughs> the longest part of this card was the coloring. But also I love coloring. So no big deal. Okay, so I'm just showing you I die cut two times from Mermaid cardstock the large shadow box and then I'm using the largest rectangle and die cutting out from one of the edges to make so you can see through the shadow box. I'm also die cutting out the hillsides in white cardstock. Now I'm going to do some ink blending because I have to. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just using Twisted Citron Mode Lawn and a little tiny smattering of pine needles for, uh, you know, to mimic like a grass area on the bottoms of my card. I am ink blending on the inside and outside. Since you can see inside the shadow box, I wanted just a hint of color inside too. I don't do as much detail. I don't pay as much attention, but you know, just so you can look in and see, oh yeah, there's grass. It's the sky. It matches that, that kind of thing. Um, the ink blending was <laughs> super fast. I mean, obviously I have it sped up here, but it was, it, it didn't, it took no time at all because I was just adding a hint of color. I wasn't doing a whole area at the top of the sky here. I'm just using blueprint sketch, which is base, excuse me, which is basically the only color I use. Um, if it was a little bit harsh on the edges, I did go in with peacock feathers just to smooth it out because it's literally the same color. <laughs> and um, that that was it. Um, I, again, did do the inside and outsides of both panels. And then I forgot when I cleaned up my green ink blending. Oh, yeah, I need to ink blend the 
grass area too. So I just did that real quick. Again, same colors, twisted citron, tiny bit of pine needles, mowed lawn, um, just to add some bright green, happy rolling hills for these critters to read on. And um, like I said, it was super fast. <laughs> I did speed it up, but is it was super fast. Next, I decided, because I can't help myself, and I apologize, to splatter on my card. I'm using Blueprint Sketch and Peacock Feathers and some water and an old paintbrush. And I'm just splattering the, I'm getting my paintbrush wet. Then I'm picking up some color and splattering just along the sky in both colors, just on the outside. And... Then I, when I'm, once I'm happy with that, I'm also splattering some white acrylic ink on top because again, I have a problem. Hello, my name is Sam and I have a problem and it's splattering distress inks. My bad. Um, I just liked the little bit of detail it added. It's so fun. And, um, once I splattered everything, I just set it aside to dry and decided while it was drying was the perfect time to heat emboss the sentiment, which is you are literally the best. And I laughed the whole time I made it. I couldn't decide if I wanted it on black or vellum, so I did both. And then once I put the card together, I decided that I wanted to use black, but I didn't know at the time. Next, I'm showing you, I'm just using um, quarter inch tape um, to tape my shadow box together. I'm using my bone folder to fold along all the perforated edges. Um, easy peasy, everything is done with the die. I'm just folding along the lines. Next, I'm going to add some tape to all the tabs um, on my, on the shadow box and I'm lining it up so that the bottom of the shadow box is flush. And you can see when you close it, it's perfectly lined up. Um, next I am going to add some tape to the tabs of the hills. I do struggle getting the release paper off, but I mean, I won in the end. It just took a bit. It was a battle. It was a battle. <laughs> I'm lining up the um, bottoms of the hillside with the bottom of the shadow box card, making sure it's all flush at the bottom. Easy peasy. Um, the other tab is standing up. So when I fold this over, it all glues together and everything is attached and it's perfectly lined up. I mean, I went through this quickly because I've done this card a hundred times and I love it every time. I mean, it's the easiest thing. <laughs> so easy. Uh, this is basically what the card's going to look like from the front when I'm done. I had to add just a little bit of temporary tape to the back while I set up my card to see where I wanted each image, but now I'm actually gluing the images down. But I am the kind of person that has to play with the images, line them up, see which ones are going to go where. I can't think of it in my mind. I have to play with it, which is, you know, to me, half the fun of making the card is playing with the images. So, um, but that's, that's why some of the images looked like they were already stuck down because I temporarily adhered them while I was moving them around. Of course I had to stack this uh, beautiful rainbow <laughs> of books and I'm putting some grass tufts at the bottom. It does hang off the edge, but I go and trim it at the end. I'm just letting the glue dry before I do. Um, this mole is my favorite image by far. I mean, I love them all, the fox laying down, but that mole just with his little nose peeking up and I thought it would be perfect um, to put on the back of the card where you write your sentiment. And so it's adorable. Um, the squirrel and the little bookworm are having a little book party. And then lastly, I just put that pink book on top um, to finish off the rainbow. Um, oh yeah, and I did have more tufts of grass. So I thought, oh, why not behind this little book on the, that's open? And um, that's the card. I love everything. I love the dimension. I love each little tiny scene of the little bookworms and the, the critters reading. I did decide while I was showing this here that I wanted to add, there's a little sentiment in the little Woodland Library add-on stamp set that says flip. And I thought it would be so cute to add where the squirrel is reading because he's just like so into the book he's reading and flipping the pages. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me and making this card with me. And I hope that you're inspired. Please check it out on the Lawn Fun blog and have a great day. Bye.